All right, we're back. 412-575-2600. We'll give you an update at the end of this uh, hockey game. It's one nothing right now, Tampa Bay. Uh, real quick, Chris, the only thing I'll say about Montreal, I'll give them a lot of credit for how they played this game tonight. I mean, Carey Price had to make some ridiculous saves. So did Vasilevsky. They've been great. I think Montreal, you know, came in, was physical, did pretty much what they had to do from a road team's perspective, trying to stay alive, knowing they're undermanned. But I thought they played a pretty good game so far, and it's only one nothing. So it's still a possibility they tied and went in an overtime. Yeah, I mean, it's still a possibility. It's on the table, and I'll give them credit for this much. I honestly thought Tampa was going to route them in this game. I thought it had the potential to be one of those absolute snooze fests, like the Penguins closing out the North Stars about 30 years ago, what, 8 to nothing? Yep. So I, I thought they were going to get absolutely steamrolled, but I'll tell you what, the story with Montreal is kind of a sneaky one. They were pretty good five on five. All those little possession metrics that suggest whether a team should be good or not, they actually ranked pretty highly in that regard and if they had one or two more goal scorers on that team i think they'd have been really dangerous and a much better team in terms of you know being built to maybe upset tampa bay as it is i think this series still ends tonight i think tampa's gonna hold on yeah only five minutes left we'll see how it goes all right back to the lines we go we got mike and bethel park joins us right now on the board of board hotline hey mike yeah hey guys love both of you wonderful job uh and i, I like nagoski that's a nice story i do enjoy that <laughs> And I was just wondering, Bob and Chris, if you think this might be the turning point of whether the uh, pirate management listens to what the fans are saying. It looked like there wasn't 3,000 fans at the ballpark today. I don't have a computer to pull up the official attendance. And, uh, you know, if they continue trading off players and uh, whatnot, maybe the fans have spoken and uh, they can well, turn it. I'll say this, hand. Mike. I, I think the last weekend, you know, that was one of the heavier produced uh, promo weekends they've had with the reopening and all of this stuff. And, Chris, I don't know what the biggest crowd was, but it couldn't have been over, what, 20,000 at the very most at one of the games, but maybe not even close to that. So I don't think that was a good sign. Yeah, but, I mean, I guess what I would say is there have been in the past, in past years, right, yeah. uh, people threatening to organize mass walkouts whenever they've had a TV game, anything nationally, when people were unhappy here because they felt like that would send a message. All that stuff has fizzled out. Uh, I don't think that ownership or anything else is going to be cowed by really low attendance because that's been the status quo for, what, the last two years that they've had games uh, attended? Uh, even the pandemic, don't... they made money by not showing up, <laughs> I think, in this pandemic. I so. mean, I, yeah, I just don't think I, – I don't want to – here's when a guy like Mike in Bethel Park calls with an opinion specifically like that or almost asking us, it sounds pleading, like he's hoping for something from one of us, that we're going to say something he hasn't heard before and that we're going to give him some glimmer that this is going to somehow be different. And I just – I don't want to give people hope in something that is just not even remotely on the table. It's not even a possibility, which is why I would tell people – if you still just like baseball for baseball's sake, don't think that not going is some grand gesture or that you're going to, like, torture yourself and not do something you enjoy because it might send a message. Just go. If you want to go, just go. Yeah, I agree with that, too. And you may see some things that are enjoyable to you. I mean, certainly the product. Nagowski! Right now, yeah, you'll see Nagowski. And right now he's a cult hero. And you can get autographs at $15 a piece going on right now. And it may go up if he pitches again. So back to the lines. Tom in the south side. Tom, how are you? Hey, guys. Uh, first off, great show. Um, I'm from Boston, so I'm a big Red Sox fan. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm 24. So there is a you know a good amount of us my age out there in Boston that like baseball. But um, I'd say it's, it's right, though. You know, a bunch of us that are this age, like, very rare you find us that can watch baseball, like, at this age. So that is correct. Um, I had an idea, all right? And this could sound really stupid, but I'm not sure what you guys think. Um, what do you guys think for – Chris Sale, Michael Chavis, or Christian Arroyo, maybe a draft pick um, or two for Adam Frazier. So I know the Red Sox really should do something at the deadline um, to really cement this season. Uh, we do need help at second base. It's kind of off and on. The fielding isn't great there, and Arroyo is either hurt. Chavis is always going down. How much does Sale make? <laughs> Just to throw uh, water on this know. argument, because they're not going to do that. They're going to I mean, get guys who are 17, in, 18, and 19 socks. years old. They're going to draft a shortstop who's five years away. This is how they're going to do it. They're going to look. They're looking farther down the line than anyone else. And from a Boston perspective, yes, I think Frazier would be a, a nice ad. I don't know what they have to give, but they're not going to get Chris Sale. The White Sox are getting him. The White Sox are getting Adam Frazier. Like, 
A team that ends in Sox will be Adam Frazier's employer. That seems almost like a given at this point. Yeah, but the return, so. I've heard this third uh, overall pick, uh, what is it, a first baseman named Vaughn? I mean, that seems like a lot, especially if he's that good or if he potentially can be that good. Normally, you're not going to get, for a position player, one of the other team's best assets. You're going to get somebody in the middle, you know what I mean? Isn't that how it normally works? Pitchers normally get more. But for, for a position player? Yeah, I mean, it's all, it all depends, though. It all depends on what a given GM can get. I, I don't want to rip open an old wound here, rip the bandaid off an old wound. Sometimes you can get for one mediocre Chris Archer, a Tyler Glass now, an Austin Meadows, <laughs> and Shane Baz. Uh, so it all depends on what one GM can convince another GM to part with. Yeah, that one of the steals of the century. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have done it. Tampa's got enough success in sports. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Strike it from the official record. I'm still waiting for Tom Brady to show up tomorrow when they throw the Stanley Cup around in the water. Bob, That's going to be. The I have a question, by the way. Yes. I have a trade question. Just hypothetically, building off of what Tom uh, said there, mm -hmm. what do you think the Pirates could get for Nagowski? <laughs> I don't want to trade him. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's no. Pittsburgh property. Understandable. I'm not giving him, yes. I'm not yes. <laughs> Can't trade cult heroes. No. That'll really drive him away. He's untouchable, as they say in the vernacular. Let's go to Fred in <laughs> Uniontown. What's up, Fred? How are you? Hey, how you doing? All right. What's up? <laughs> hey, this is for Mueller. Hey, Mueller, what's so funny about Nagowski? <laughs> He's this. a funny guy huh? with a funny last name. No, no. That no, is like a, a career name. journeyman. Is, is yes, that a funny so name? So what? No. It's just... Yes, and it sounds like Big Lebowski, the movie. Right, Nagowski, that's why it's Lebowski. Big Nagowski. Well, I think that was kind of ignorant of you. I'm the one saying yeah. it. <laughs> Mahler, Mahler. Fred, <laughs> Fred. All right, we'll do for a break, break. 412 575 2600. But before we do that, we have our Tri State Office Furniture tweet of the day. And this comes to us from Joe Block, and it happens to be about your favorite. <laughs> Uh, Fred, this is your favorite guy here. We got John uh, Nagoski, first pirate with four hits and pitch in the same game since Steve Blass in 1969. How about that? And now all of a sudden his pitching career will go right down and he'll start getting wild. He was really good today at 50 miles an hour. Oh, play. come on. That, I'm just, is that really necessary? No, come I had on. To take a shot. And Fred's I'm sorry. And, and Steve's Fred got is a great, mad at me. Fred, Steve has got a great sense of humor. He would laugh at that if he were here. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more right here on Pittsburgh CW. Thank you.